Olá, nosso assunto de hoje é sobre Computation of Think na educação. Computation of Think, em tradução livre, seria algo como pensamento computacional. Quem primeiro falou sobre esse termo foi a doutora Janet Wing. Hoje ela é vice-presidente de desenvolvimento da Microsoft. A doutora Janet Wing tem um currículo impressionante. Ela é formada no MIT, tem PHD no MIT, foi professora da Universidade do Sul da Califórnia, foi professora do MIT e uh, a última função dela, antes de entrar na Microsoft, era professora-chefe da Universidade uh, Carnegie Mellon, do Departamento de Ciência da Computação. E em 2006, ela escreveu um paper muito interessante a respeito de Computational Think, onde ela disse o seguinte, que todas as pessoas, independente de ser ou não da computação, deveriam uh, aprender a pensar dessa maneira. E, e é sobre isso que nós conversamos com ela. Então, com vocês, doutora Janet Wing. Hello, Brazil and Annie Bowie Green. That's a great question. I, I believe that in the United States, within the next 10 or 20 years, every high school student will have available to him or her uh, the ability, the, the opportunity to learn computer science um, in, in their school. I, I would like to think that eventually um, it will be Uh, you know, as routine to take computer science as it is to take biology, chemistry, physics, calculus, and so on in high school. So I'm pretty sure in 10 or 20 years, it will be um, as available uh, to all students. Um, I, I can't predict when, when and if ever it will become a requirement in the way that Uh, mathematics and other science disciplines um, ha have become. I do predict that at the university level, at the colleges and universities in 10 or 20 years, many of them, if not all of them, will have it not only a, a course available to all students, including non-majors, to take computer science, but it may actually be a requirement to graduate. There are, there are many roadblocks. This is why it's not so easy to do, especially in the United States. I think the primary roadblock is that the curriculum in K through 12 education in the United States is already pretty packed. There's no room for more. So if one is trying to argue, you need to add this other set of concepts or other set of skills to to every graduate, K through 12 graduate, then where are you going to fit it in? And so this is an ongoing conversation that we are having, you know, we more broadly speaking are having to figure out, does it, is it a, a is it a, a course that is an elective? Is it a course that piggybacks um, concepts on other courses like math and biology and physics and so on? Is it a separate course that is simply going to be a requirement? And over time, I think we're going to see a mix of these models and something will shake out. Uh, and I, I think as, um, as the work, as people realize the skills of this 21st century workforce requires computing, um, then people are going to wake up and realize best to ensure that our high school students have access to the courses that can teach them these skills. Um, the other major challenge, we're talking about curriculum now, the other major challenge is suppose we had the courses, suppose we had the room in the curriculum to teach these courses. The biggest challenge we have today is who is going to teach these courses? We don't have enough teachers 
trained to teach computer science at the high school level. So again, there's a grassroots effort in the United States and a, a wonderful effort going on in the UK to address the teacher training problem. And one of the ways um, one can bootstrap this is to use uh, people who are working in industry as adjuncts to teach at the high school level. Um, and over time, those people can help train the high school teachers to teach this material. We didn't have tool support the way, you know, uh, the RISE group has provided for um, Well, when I, if I could start from the, 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 the purest um, argument, which is when I see all disciplines uh, advancing their, um, advancing knowledge and uh, their state of the art, many of them now have turned to computational methods and tools and languages as a way, as a new way to advance their discipline. So if, for instance, if you look at biology, biology today is advancing so rapidly in terms of discovering new biology because of the prevalent use of computational tools, the ability to analyze big data, um, and so on and so forth. That's just biology. Many of the advances, for instance, just in sequencing the human genome could not have occurred so quickly had these computational tools and methods uh, not been used. Similarly, for every single science and engineering discipline, and I saw this when I was at the National Science Foundation and I was working with my fellow scientists and engineers um, and seeing in their disciplines how far they could advance their fields using computational thinking. So from a research perspective in science and engineering disciplines, this is, our, this is a given. This is an absolute given. So now there's two questions. What about outside of science and engineering? And then how far down in the schooling pipeline do you need to go to, to, be, um, to be the most effective. So the first in terms of what I'm seeing now beyond science and engineering is that even in the arts, humanities, and social science disciplines, the use of computing and digital technology is also influencing the way in which they just practice, let alone advanced state of the art. So you see many programs, educational programs and research programs, uh, certainly in the United States, on digital humanities, digital journalism, computational photography, uh, you know, computational X or digital X, where X is some field in art, humanities, social science. So when, when you see this happening in the sub-disciplines, then it's just inevitable that if you're going to work in that discipline or you're going to do research in that discipline or you're going to teach that discipline, you're going to need the tools of the trade. And the tools of the trade will include computational thinking. So that's the breadth of how computational thinking will change the nature, the practice and the research in all these different disciplines. For instance, we see this in the legal community. Okay, so that's that. Then there's how far down in the educational pipeline do you need to start um, in order to really be most effective when you become a professional in that discipline? And that's the argument of why um, K through 12, why we're making an argument that computational thinking would be good for, for exposure to the K through 12 students. Because eventually, certainly at the, by the high school level, eventually when they go to college or enter the workforce, no matter what profession they are in, no matter what major they um, choose, no matter what career they choose, if they're armed with these computational thinking 
um, skills, then they'll be set. They'll be set to do well. So that's why the argument of why you go down to the K through 12 level. And we'll see that this question, the main question, boils down to the act of trusting the sender. Where you should think about the sender. I think the loss would be that there will be people who know computational thinking, including knowing how to program, and people who don't. And I think the people who know will have an edge over the people who don't. Um, it's just like any kind of basic skill, mathematics, reading, writing, communication skills, logical reasoning, analytical reasoning. The more you can master complexity, the better you are um, in terms of you, the skill set that you have. And the world is getting more complex. The problems are more complex. The interactions between and among people and devices is just going to get more complex. Um, and the number, the numbers, the scale at which we do anything uh, in terms of uh, numbers of people we can reach through Facebook or numbers of devices that are going to be in our home because of Internet of Things. It's just going to be more and more. So. Um, the world is moving in that direction, and you, if you have the ability to abstract, which is one of the primary skills you learn in com computer science, then you'll be able to deal with that complexity. So someone trained in computational thinking will have an advantage over someone who's not. I think Brazil and other developing or emerging countries have an advantage because they can actually leapfrog um, if they other countries in their same state. Uh, if, if say every student in Brazil at the K through 12 uh, level were taught computational thinking, that elevates this the mastery of, of um, skills the whole country so they will be primed for um jobs that demand a higher technical ability a higher logical reasoning set um, analytical reasoning a symbolic reasoning um and, and so on so i think it's it will just elevate the quality of the workers in a country i i have a vision for the future. Well, I think we've already seen that computational thinking or the use of computing has transformed other careers and fields. So for instance, just take law. Um, it used to be that you would hire a lot of legal aides to pour through case records and all those big volumes of those law books. But now you just use search. And all of a sudden, the skill set needed to do what those humans had to do so painstakingly and tediously and taking a long time could be done more efficiently, more effectively, and more comprehensively by using computational tools. Now, that's not necessarily computational thinking per se, but that's knowing when it is appropriate to use a computational tool or not. And that's the computational thinking part. So yes, you can use these digital tools and search technology, but there may be still cases or uh, situations where the human needs to make good judgment. The human in the loop or the, the judgment by human or the decision made by human is still critical to the decision to be made. So we haven't solved the grand AI problem yet. And not until we solve Grand AI will we not need humans at all. And so I think this is um, uh, this is where we want to use technology wisely, judiciously, and with understanding of the capabilities and limitations. And so we will always need humans. But there are um, other cases in uh, you. You asked about medicine. Uh, the whole healthcare industry is being transformed by the use of digital technology, whether it's just electronic health records 
or devices that we implant in people that are um, monitoring uh, you know, the heart that can be programmed because you can download new software in it. All, everything from just record keeping to um, keeping someone alive is, all of this is digital technology and it's transforming the field. So that people who practice in this field or do research in this field need to be computer literate at least, but also again, understand and from a computational thinking point of view, the capabilities and limitations of the digital technology. Trend number two. Trend number three is storage is cheap. Trend number four is a growth in huge. I think so, absolutely. I don't see an end to it. it, it there is far more demand than supply in the United States. That's one. And the second is when I look at the IT industry, the it's exploding in terms of the uh, advances in technology and the need, the demand for programmers, software developers, software engineers. But then beyond the IT industry, it's a wide, wide world for the very reasons I talked about before. So you will now see companies that were traditionally maybe, um, you know, engineering companies like GE or aerospace companies like Boeing, where are they, where are they hiring? They're hiring software engineers. They're hiring people who know how to program. They're hiring people who know machine learning. And, and then there's um, sectors like uh, biology, um, uh, that it's all of, or, or the uh, sciences like geoscience, astronomy, it's all about big data. Healthcare as well, it's all about big data. Finance industry, it's all about big data. They want people who know how to program, who know how to do modeling, who know how to do machine learning, who know how to do analytics. And so the demand for skilled people, not just computer programmers, but computer scientists and data scientists will continue to grow for the foreseeable future. My first time in Doha. First time. No, I, I wish you luck. I hope Brazil somehow uh, goes the way of the UK and perhaps can uh, in, in, institute uh, computer science at the K through 12 education level.